Hello and welcome to another edition of the Moving Iron Podcast. This podcast is proudly provided by Axon, helping dealers move more iron for almost 100 years. Find out more at axontire.com. Axon was started almost 100 years ago out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. It's that same passion that drives them today. With a vision for a better experience for both farmer and dealer, they set out to create a better way to move more iron. When you partner with Axon, you get immediate access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. Axon carries all major brands and sizes of tires, wheels, and tracks. From custom colors and sizes to fully customized wheels, you can have the solution for virtually any problem today's farmer is trying to solve. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. This podcast is also brought to you by Valley Transportation. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 or go to valleytransinc.com for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. This podcast is also brought to you by Ag Direct. No matter how you buy your ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Moving iron time and time again. Through the years you'll find us here. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Valley Transportation. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. And I have got Parker and Brad on here from Valley Transportation. What's going on, guys? Oh, good day. A little chilly here in Minnesota. Yeah, I think yeah, that's a relative term in Minnesota, man. It's cold. <laughs> that's cold here, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was 14 below this morning when we got up, so. Yep. Yeah, that's that's cold. Know where I come from. So, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. How you guys? Uh, with you, Casey? Yeah, things are going good, man. We had that snap, that cold snap. We've been right on the edge of the that really vicious cold air. I mean, I was watching a... Talking to Parker before we started recording here, and, and I was looking at the weather map, trying to get an idea for what the day was going to look like, and that that dip of Arctic air came through, and, and we were about an hour and a half south of that, and the difference was about 25 degrees from where it started and where it finished. So, I don't, yeah. I, we need some snow, but I don't need 25 below either. So it's it's <laughs> it's a catch it's a catch either way, right? So, right. yeah. So uh, yeah. how how you guys been so far this week this month? You guys uh been cold been thing a lot of stuff going on you got the it's all trucking situations popping up around the country um what's uh what's some of your feedback and what you see happening out there right now well you know we've been we started the year off of course uh just working on our rates and things yep. and, and uh, as you know rates aren't getting any cheaper so we've uh, been adjusting some of them with our customers and working and dealing with them to to get those raised up and still have the driver crisis you know the, yeah. the hiring crisis is always always going to be there you know mm-hmm. we've always had it but it's a lot worse today than it's ever been so, yeah yeah that uh after, the, after holidays it seems or around the holiday season it seems like you know you kind of lose a few people go home and then they just stay there right yep yeah yep. when you guys take a look at uh, what's going up in canada you know with this whole I don't know if it's just trucker strike or what do you want to call it, but it's uh, you know, they're they're driving from Vancouver to to uh, where they, Ottawa, right? Is that where they're going? Uh, all the way across the uh, Ottawa, yeah. yeah, all the way across the uh, the country there. And uh, I've been watching a lot of videos on that and and those kind of things. And I guess as you guys look at that, are you seeing Parker? Are you seeing really anything from a booking of the freight side of it that that's causing a lot of logistics with the companies you guys deal with going back and forth across the the border? It hasn't so far with the companies that I deal with that haul our freight back and forth, um, and I haven't really brought it up to them uh, this year anyway, but I've, I've seen a little bit on the news, and I don't know how they're going to get it all done, getting all these drivers vaccinated and different stuff like that, but um, so far, I haven't saw any issues with it so far anyway. Yeah, okay. 
I think they're going to have a big problem trying to get this driver, this this driver pool vaccinated. Uh, I know when we when we started talking about it here uh, prior to that mandate getting squashed, uh, we we were having a lot of feedback from drivers and a lot of issues. So, um, and I think you know that's all about what's going on in Canada. They they can't cross the border without it, and uh, they're they're just objecting to it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of that going on right now. Even down, even down here, you know, with some of the stuff that you see in, in various hospitals and and hospital workers and you know government workers, those kind of things, we start seeing that that stuff start to really trickle down. So there's a bigger issue there than than I think that uh, than what than what you know the powers that be where they want to look forward to and admit when when 25 or 30 percent of, of the truck drivers you know in canada just say well we're not going to do it and we're going to do something different or we're going to go down and work in the u.s or something like that that creates a pretty big problem and yeah. it's going to be got, to address i read i read something yesterday they they've got uh, fifty thousand trucks in that convoy and five hundred thousand people no so kidding that, those are some big numbers yeah that is i didn't and, realize it was that big yeah yeah you know the, i guess it's family members and vehicles and you know, you start you start landing that group of people in one location when they when they get to their destination, and they're going to have an impact. Yeah, it's yeah. going to make a few things, make a few people turn their head. That's for sure. Right. That's yeah. for damn sure. So, well, Parker, let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing on on the logistics side of it out there from from the lead times that you're seeing. Um, you know, as you truck stuff around, what kind of lead times are you looking at right now when you guys are uh, booking freight? You know, it, it still all depends on, on what part of the country it's coming from. Um, but, you know, two to three weeks from when we get the information and and, uh, and um, when the machine's actually ready to ship. Um, this month, it started out pretty tricky, you know, with the holiday season. You got so many drivers wanting to be home. So it took us it took us majority of the month to get caught up from everything that we had in, in December. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, I mean... Everybody's steady. The factories are busy. John Deere and I was pretty slow, but I think they're sl- starting to get back back on track and get some stuff released. But I think uh, I think it'll get real busy again here before too long. Yeah. From an OEM perspective, are you seeing? Um, is there any indication out there that you're going to see a lot more freight start making its way out of these factories? Um, you know, coming into spring and and through the summer. I would sure think so. I mean, they've kind of been kind of slowed up here for the past few weeks. I would I would imagine they'd they'd get everything rolling and and start going. I haven't heard anything on you know chip shortage. I think there's still a lot of tractors down in Waterloo that are waiting for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, but other factories that I haul out of, it's hit and miss. Uh, a lot of times, stuff's ready to go. A lot of the times, the day before they they told you tell you to hold up for another week because they're waiting on parts. Yep. I know you guys get stuff out of the port uh, from time to time. Uh, the situation out in California um, seems like it's cleared up a little bit, but it's still it's still kind of there. You get down around Galveston, it's a whole different thing. Then you get out on the East Coast, it's another another topic altogether. So I guess as you look at those the port situation, wh- what are you seeing now the, coming out of the ports right now? Is it still depending on where you're at, type of thing, or is it all kind of cleared up pretty well? Yeah, it still seems like it's. It depends on where you're at, and, and with the container situation, I think that's the biggest issue out in California. But like the uh, the places that we're loading actual equipment, you know, excavators and different stuff that come in brand new, that that hasn't been in the issue. But like going to a couple of the ports down in Texas, where it used to be you just pull in and get delivered, now you you got to make sure you call at least two three days ahead to schedule a, a unloading appointment, and and if uh, you might be on a list, and you don't know when you're going to get get your stuff off your trailer. Really? So that the port, in, the, so I guess it's picked up quite a bit in in down in Texas. Is that a lot of that kind of some overflow from various other ports that are having some backup backlog issues? You think? Yeah, a few a few exporters that we deal with that move a lot of equipment to different countries and stuff. A lot of used combines, and and um, they're buying a lot of stuff, and it they kind of determine which port they want to get it sent to depending on how busy that port is, whether we ship it to Baltimore or mm-hmm. Freeport, Texas, or Galveston or Houston. Right. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, you know, Brad, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the driver situation you, you alluded to earlier that, you know, still have some driver shortages out there and what that looks like. What are some of the 
some of the key factors out there right now as you take a look what's going on there? I mean, what what are what's Valley doing differently right now, trying to get people on board uh, to get some drivers out there? Uh, you know, just we just uh, redid our advertising again yesterday, and yeah. you know we've, we've uh, adjusted our pay scale early this year. Mm-hmm and uh, raise that up quite a bit but it, it just seems like you know the the biggest challenge the two biggest challenges we have is home time and pay right you know when they leave that's the two things they talk the most about yeah you know we keep them all you know it's hard to haul iron and have them home every night you know right. so yeah if we're if we're leaving iowa and, and going to california or florida or wherever it, it just you know the timing and then by the time you get them a load turned around and headed back this way and you know they they're going to be out two three weeks so it it uh, gets gets to be a challenge there so you know we do have local positions available too you know where they are home every weekend mm-hmm. but uh you know there's only a certain amount of that but, but pay is pay has really got just gone crazy these guys are just you know paying through the moon if they're having trouble hiring drivers they're just Mm-hmm. opening their checkbooks and and that's what we're finding that the minute a driver finds that out he's he's gone so right it's yep. it's hard it's hard to manage and, and keep a handle on costs and overhead issues you know so. yep now i understand that same way I, in, in yeah here on the equipment side of it too i mean there's there's a right. just right now it's just one of those it's a it's an employee's market you know you're trying to find yeah. trying to find those things out so yeah it's a it's a uh Definitely a different set of challenges than what we're probably used to seeing, but there's you know there's there's some light at the end of the tunnel here. I hope sooner than later, we'll, yeah. hopefully we can get a few things changed changed around you here. You know, we've really noticed here since the first of the year that that we've had a lot more people coming through the door looking for for jobs. You know, we yeah. filled a couple positions here uh, uh, on site that we were had opened, and and uh, the drivers are starting to roll through the door again so hopefully uh hopefully things are changing around a little bit out there i know some of the programs and things that they've been able to utilize are going away so yep. hopefully they figure out they need to go back to work yeah <laughs> I mean, that'd be nice that'd be real nice when you look at, at what's going on right now in the uh you know tractors and combines those kind of things obviously have some huge delays last time we talked there were some pretty even longer delays on the truck side. Are you guys seeing those delays shrink at all, or is it still about the same? It seems like they're shrinking. I, mm-hmm. I just got a call yesterday that they opened up uh, second quarter that we can possibly order some more trucks. So yeah. we had to, we had to give them a, a, a number of what we would be interested in. The issue is is they took all our discounts away. So so they they're going to get more money for what they're what they're shipping out the door. Or, or they're going to sell it to somebody else. So. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> we're seeing the same thing too. Guys are out there right now doing doing that stuff, and they're uh, if they don't if they're hem hawing around or they're not making quick decisions, they're they're getting left in the dust because it's yeah it's moving fast. It's, I've never seen the decision making process get to where it is. You know, if yeah. you want it, you need to make your decision today. So if, yeah. you, if you know, go from there. Yeah, so. I had about I had about six hours yesterday to make up my mind on how many I wanted. So <laughs> right. yeah. they didn't give me a lot of time. Yeah, it's it's amazing how fast they want you to want you to move. Yeah. But I mean, it's the world you live in because, right. like, just like you said, if if you don't want it, there's you know six other people that'll take them. So it's right. it's a it's a it's a weird weird place. So yeah. well, I want to get your guys' opinion on this a little bit because it's I read about as much about this as I've read about other things, but. You know, Deer introduced their their autonomous tractor here at the first of the year, and and what that looked like in a tillage uh, uh, application. Um, you read a lot of stuff out there about autonomous vehicles, and especially on the autonomous truck side, and what that looks like. Just for conversation's sake, as you guys look out across the landscape right now, what are you hearing from your from your manufacturers? You know, the the Pete's and the Freightliners and the Western Stars and those guys. When you start looking at autonomous vehicles where where are they at with that and 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 i guess how how soon do you think that that's going to be a realistic thing in in the trucking industry yeah you know they to be real honest with you you hardly even have those conversations yet i mean if if you're sitting around talking like we are today Mm -hmm. they they will come up but it for the majority of the people on the trucking side they're pretty pretty sure they they have the same feeling i do it 
that that's a long ways in the future if it's ever in the future. So, right. you, you know, especially for us guys hauling iron and stuff, there's always going to be a driver in that truck. Yep. Um, you know, just because of, of maintaining the freight on the trailer and, and taking care of it and making sure it's tied down, secured properly, you you know, will you have some some assist from the truck on the driving portion? Probably. You know, you might mm-hmm. see that, but I really think I really think that we're ten years away from a truck following a truck with a driver in it. Right. You know, so so they're going down yeah. the road with two following one with a driver in it, hauling a hauling a load of whatever, blue jeans or whatever, you right. know. But uh I think we're a lot farther farther away from just having one out there skating along with no driver in it. Period. Right. So, yeah, that's the. I don't know about you, but that doesn't give me a big comfort <laughs> level. Now, if I drove by a truck and there wasn't anybody in it, I'd, I would try to get around it as fast as I possibly could. <laughs> okay, I'll take my map. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, that would be a, that would be a, a different thing. But same with a car, though. Too, if I drove by somebody and there was just a car, somebody sitting in the back seat, nobody in the front seat, I'd be. Like, yeah, a little scary. A little scary. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't see it. You know, that gone bad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mainly, mainly for insurance purposes too. Who yeah. takes the li- liability on in a situation like that? You know, yeah. it's, it'd be tough to do. Yep. And I think that's It'd be hard to go at truck manufacturer. Yeah, and I think that's the the one thing on even on the ag side of it uh, that's really holding that back is when. It, you know, kills a family of four in a in a minivan someplace. Who, right. Who's at fault? You know, who's who's the lawyer going to get paid from? And I think that's what the uh, the big the big drawback is right now. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how things how things wrap up as as that yeah. kind of comes. It's a good me. idea. It definitely helps with the driver shortage. But oh, yeah. yeah, it's a long uh, long ways away for sure. Casey, I got a feeling you and I ain't going to be around to see it. <laughs> 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 You're probably right. Yeah, it's probably further out than than we want to you know you know want to want to yeah. admit to that. So yeah, for sure. All right, probably further out than the electric trucks. You know, I mean, yeah, if they can ever get that figured out so they can drive an actual long distance, you know. Yep. Yeah, I had a conversation with some about the electric tractors the other day, talking about that, and it's it's good at about the fifty horsepower level, but I don't I don't know how it's going to work. They don't have the battery technology to. To really sustain a 600 horsepower, you know, type of machine out there. So yeah, you know, it's fun to talk about this kind of stuff, but it, it, fruition is always, you know, one thing else, right? So yeah, right. And like they came out with the uh, Polaris Ranger electric vehicle. Like yeah, that's all great and everything, but it's only got like an 85 mile range. If you go trail riding with somebody, yeah, where are you going to plug it in? Yeah, it'd be kind of bad to get stuck out there in the middle of the mountain someplace, and you're. Right. Your battery's right. dead. <laughs> yeah. Give you a reason to go to the local pub, though, and get it charged up. Yeah. Yeah, you can sit up there and wait for a minute. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. So I guess as you guys take a look at your landscape right now and you and you kind of see what's out there, what are some of the stuff that's on the horizons for Valley Transportation that you want people to make sure they know about? Uh, you know, I, I think things are pretty positive. I, I, we got a good outlook for this year, the, the freight is coming back you know we saw a big gain last year um to rebound off of our 2019 numbers you know mm-hmm. and uh we just we just think uh we're gonna have the ability to hire hire more people and drivers in the seats and you know we've got uh, a really new fleet of equipment we've done a lot of trading over the past two years we were fortunate enough to have all our orders in and and uh we're able to upgrade all of our equipment and sold our sold our used stuff off at a number that I never thought we'd ever see. Yeah, and uh, you know, so things are pretty positive here on our end. Yep, so. yep. I would say I would echo that. You know, same deal. I mean, if you're if you're in the if if you have whatever you have that's available today that you can sell, uh, whether it's a semi truck yep. or a combine, you're going to get top dollar for it. And right, it, it's a. Uh, it's pretty amazing what what you can make things happen now. So, right, but yeah. So, well, good stuff, guys. If uh, Parker, why don't you uh, instead of me reading it, why don't you why don't you throw out how we can get a hold of Valley Transportation? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you can give me a call at 800-657-4910. Uh, go to our website at valleytransinc.com. 
or shoot me an email at pjohnson at valleytransinc.com. Right on. And, Brad, if folks want to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, just call the main office here at the same 800 number, 800-657-4910, and uh, ask for me, and you'll get in here. Otherwise, uh, bgraf, G-R-A-F-E, at valleytransinc.com is my email. Right on. Okay. Well, guys, appreciate you being on the podcast, and thanks for uh, partnering with me this year on the Moving Iron Podcast. All right. Thanks, Casey. Have a good day. You want to have a meaningful competitive advantage to help sell more equipment. Whether you represent the sales, parts, or management department of an implement dealership, there's a surprising amount of complexity when it comes to tire, wheel, and track technology. Let Axon worry about that so you can get back to supporting your customers. Axon has leveraged years of experience to create a streamlined process that gives you a proven path to help today's grower and sell more equipment. The roots of their organization go back almost 100 years to the invention of the rubber tractor tire. Supporting agriculture is the number one driver of Axon from product development through sales and service. To find more or become an Axon dealer, head over to axontire.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all of your trucking needs at Valley Transportation. Our goal is to help you reach yours. And no matter how you buy ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. Moving in the 21st century. Working hard for you and me